have a copper cylinder and we want to heat this copper cylinder from 60 to 110. Okay, so that first sentence already tells us that we're going to have energy going into this copper cylinder, right? That's where our energy is going to be pointing. Um, and we're going to do that in a period of 40 minutes, all right? So that's how long it's going to take us to do that. So you can already think that we're going to have some sort of rate related to this problem. The diameter of this guy is 20 centimeters. And its height is 15 centimeters. And if we take the average density of the copper and all that, we're going to get the density NACP uh, values that we're given. We are to determine the total amount of heat transfer to the copper cylinder, the average rate of heat transfer to the cylinder, and the average heat flux. So the main idea of this question is to have um, to define these three things here. The calculation is not so much that important as is defining these three things. Uh, do we have homework this week? No, next week, it starts on week three. This week you're off the hook, so enjoy. Okay, so number one, total amount of heat to the copper cylinder. So it's asking us total amount of heat, that's gonna be in joules, right? Heat is in joules or calories, something like that, but it's gonna be energy. Heat is energy. Second, the average rate of heat transfer to the cylinder. So if it's a rate of heat, second one is asking us for a joules per second. So it's asking us for power. So we're gonna to have to find something in joules per second or something related to that. Number three, what is the heat flux? Now heat flux is a concept that relates to the surface area of any body, okay? The idea is if my, let me grab this, if my cylinder here is absorbing energy, the energy is going to go into my body through its surface area. So there's an important metric related to it, which is the heat flux, which relates the amount of energy, the total amount of energy this guy is absorbing and the total surface it has, and then we divide one by the other to have the heat flux. Likewise, if it's losing energy, same thing. If it's losing energy, it's losing energy via its surface area. So the energy is leaving it through its surface. That's what this concept is about. So this guy is going to be um, juice per second again, or watts, divided by area, right? So meters squared. So in other words, we can say this is just watts per meter squared. Now, the, the letter that EGL likes to use for this is small q. And so generally she's gonna use q for energy, q dot for uh, power or rate of heat, and small q for heat flux. Be on top of this because uh, in the past, as the unit goes by, things haven't changed. So just be on top of the units and you're gonna be fine. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to find how much energy has been given to this guy. If we want to know how much energy went to this copper cylinder for it to go from 60 to 110, that's easy, right? Just need to multiply the mass, oops, just the mass that we have by Tp, by its delta T. Uh, what is the delta T is from 60 to 110, and we have that already. What is the Cp? 0.39, we have that already. What is the mass? We don't have the mass, but we do have the density. And if we have the density, we know density is just mass over volume. So that means that we can uh, use the volume times density to find the mass. Okay, so we have the density already. The only thing we don't have to be able to find the mass is the volume. With the volume, we can find the mass. With the mass, we can find the energy. So let's start by getting the volume of this guy. This is a cylinder, simple cylinder. Like so, don't mind my drawings. I horrible drawer. So if a simple cylinder like so, we can calculate the area of it, we can grab this area right here and then multiply this area over this length here, which is going to give us a volume, right? If it's a irregular shaped thing, we're going to have to integrate over the whole thing. But since it's a regular shaped cylinder, it's our life is so much easier because we just have to do, okay, the volume of this guy will be pi r squared times this h here. And it's going to give us a volume. So in our case here, the volume is going to be pi 10 squared times 15. And that gives us 
centimeters cubed because we're doing centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Okay, our density, however, if we have a look here, our density is kilograms per meters cubed. So if you want to multiply density and volume, we're going to have to have them in the same unit to be able to have the mass in kilograms. So let's go ahead and, and um, convert this. If you guys have been my students before, I taught you the best method to convert, my opinion. If you haven't, just check it out. The idea when you're converting anything is that if you're unsure, you can multiply everything by one. If you're multiplying something by one, for instance, let's just say multiplying four and four, two times two, all right, that's gonna be one, right? Four divided by two times two, that's one. So if I multiply the, the top part by four and then just divide by two, one, two times two, it's gonna be the same thing, I'm not changing anything. Likewise, if I do, likewise, if I do uh, one meter, it's exactly the same thing as 100 centimeters. So I'm multiplying by one again, so I'm not changing anything. And I could do just, just this one part of math and that would be 100% fine. My unit would be meters squared, uh, sorry, meters times centimeters squared. That's not very useful, so we can do a couple more times. So we do one more time, meters per 100 centimeters. And we do one more time. One meter is the same thing as 100 centimeters. All right, so what is that? What's gonna happen is that our three centimeters here is gonna cut these centimeters here and we're gonna have meters on the top there. And that's gonna give us 4.7, 12 times 10 to the minus three meters squared. That's the volume that we have in the cylinder. If you stick to this, if you're unsure, if you're sure of the units, you're fine. If you're sure of unit conversion, you're fine. But if you're unsure, just use this method and I guarantee you're never gonna get it wrong again. Okay. Brilliant. So now we have, we can calculate the mass, right? The mass is just going to be the density times the volume, which in our case here is 8,950 uh, kilograms meters cubed times the value we just found, 4.712 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives us 42.18. Kilograms. All right, so this cylinder that we have is actually a big chunk of copper. It's not just any quantity, it's about 40 kilograms of copper. Okay, and now if we want to know how much energy we need to give to this chunk of copper for it to go to 60 to 110, well, that's probably the easiest part because we just need to do the amount of energy it needs will be related to its specific heat. Delta T we're interested in and its mass. So in our case here, it's 0 0.395. Difference in temperature is going from 110, from 60 to 110, so that's just 50 Kelvin or Celsius. And our uh, volume, no, our mass is the 42.18. And this turns out to be what is it, 133 kilojoules, 833 kilojoules. Oops. Okay, so that's the amount of energy that I need to give to this guy to be able to uh, rise its temperature from 60 to 110. Second part of the question is, okay, but what is the power that I need to use to do that? Or, or in other words, how do I throw time into this equation? Yeah, and we know that, like we said before, power is just a relationship between energy and time, right? If we want instantaneous power, we're gonna have to derive to have the, how the rate of heat is changing at every given moment. But if we want the average power or the average rate, which is exactly what we're being asked, the average rate of heat into the cylinder, we can just take how much energy the cylinder absorbed and divide by how much time we took to give it to it. So it doesn't matter whether we gave 800 in the first minute and then 33 over the last, uh, I don't know, the last 30 minutes. Uh, 
because the average is going to take into account that. So the power or Q dot will be those 833 kilojoules that we just gave to this fella over the 40 minutes that we gave it for, right? So 40 minutes. Now you can see from this, these units here that this would render kilojoules per minute, which is not wrong per se, but if you want watts, we're gonna have to have that in seconds, right? So if you want that in seconds, we're gonna have to convert. And once again, we can do the same thing because we know that one minute is exactly the same thing as 60 seconds. So we can eliminate these guys here. And that's gonna give us 0 0.347 watts. Oops, kilowatts. Yeah, kilojoules per second. I'll just leave it in kilojoules per second for now. Kilojoules per second. Because now you see the kilo is not necessary anymore. We have a decimal figure, so we can do 347 watts. Not kilowatts, just watts. And last but not least, what is the heat flux on this guy? So now that we have the power, now we have the rate of heat in which this cylinder absorbs energy. We want to know the heat flux. All we need to find out is what is the surface area of this guy so that we can divide this power by its surface area, right? And in our case, we, again, we have a cylinder. So one, two, three. We have a cylinder, and if we want to calculate its surface area, what we need to do is notice that we're going to have an area over here, and that's times two because we're going to have it down here as well. So we have two times pi r squared. And you also have this fellow here, right? This area here. And this area here, we can calculate by doing two pi r, which is the circumference of this guy. And multiplying by h, which is this length here, right? That's going to give us an area as well. So what I'm saying is the surface area of this fellow, the cylinder here, is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And we can actually simplify that if we want into 2 pi r, r plus h. Plugging in values, um, let me see what I got. Surface area, plugging in the centimeter values that we have just there. 1570.8, and that's centimeters squared. Same thing as before, I can multiply everything by one. So it's gonna be one meters is 100 centimeters. I only have to do that twice. And I can get that this is the same thing as 0 0.157 meters squared. So if I want the heat flux, all I need to do is, okay, my heat flux will be how much power I had divided by my surface area. So that's gonna be 347 divided by 0 0.5. And that is gonna be watts meters squared which renders 222.09 watts per meter squared. So that's how much energy is going through the surface of the cylinder, through the outer surface of the cylinder. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> 